got a fever, and the only prescription is for over the line. This, I'm sorry, Smokey, you were over the line. This is wild. Is the cigar authority? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. That was pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Very stunned. Put the scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, any single malt. Glen Olivet, Glen Fittick, perhaps. Maybe a Glen Gow. Any Glen. It's time to light them up. Sounds really fun. It's time. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowboys. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, July 29th, 2017. Broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Soundstage. And today, A.J. Fernandez is quickly becoming a legend in the cigar industry, creating big-name cigars for other people while producing some of the biggest brands in the world. All the while, building his own brand and all in record time. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years and now the longest continually running cigar podcast. Voted the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Voted the top 10 educational podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. And joining us first is... There's nobody here. There's nobody here. This is your favorite thing. This is a... When people are late, you love that. Don't you? <laughs> oh my God, late, <laughs> late. They were supposed to be here two hours ago. Yeah, it's not good. And they are forty minutes behind, two hours late. Yeah. They so should be. the call is that we have to switch the first hour with the second hour. So we have two pages here. We're just gonna pop it, switch the the two hours. Okay. And I'm instead with of smoking what we were gonna smoke the first hour, we're gonna smoke the second hour. They'll come in. The and, only problem I have with that, and as long as we continue to call this hour number two will be okay, is the cigar that we're going to be smoking. We picked it as the second cigar because of the name. Yes, it's the last call. Right. So, Barry, tell us about the last call. Well, it's closing time when your bartender announces last call, and your person you're meeting, AJ Fernandez, still isn't there. <laughs> it's usually to drink you down the quickest as it's time to call it a day. And Last Day by A.J. Fernandez follows that mantra. The line is comprised of shorter and thinner ring-gauge smokes and perfect for that last cigar of the day or when you get stood up. <laughs> it's available as a delicious Ecuadorian Rosado Habano wrapper that envelopes binder and fillers from Nicaragua. And there's also a dark Pennsylvania broadleaf version um, that personally I think is one of the wrappers that should be utilized more in the industry. But we're going with the Rosado. And we're going to smoke the five and a half by 46. And before we do that, it's time for the halftime treat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Halftime treat. We haven't right, done this because, in a while. See, I got lost there for a second because we're doing the second hour first. Yes. We're going to take a break even though we haven't started yet. That's right. Because this is when the halftime plus, plus, treat would happen. To be honest with you, I'm annoyed right now. And you need to, a little something, something. A little to, something that always makes me happy when, you, when you're feeling down. You go to the ho ho because automatically it's it's funny, right? It's, you feel it's better. Ho ho! Oh yeah! It is. It's but this funny. is not the average ho ho. Oh no! <laughs> Why would we do average? No, because this is the brand new ho ho by Hosis. It is the peanut butter ho ho. So it's a funny bone. It is not a funny bone. It's far from a funny bone. This is a blend of chocolate and cake peanut butter and peanut butter, which is what a Funny bone is. No, but look at it. Right. Doesn't it look fancy? You nah, that's all right. You can keep those over there. You don't even want to try Peanut it. butter and chocolate, sacrilegious. It's like cats and dogs living together. Just does not work. We have a studio audience here to see AJ Fernandez, but uh, he is not here yet. What are you doing? Okay. Giving that one to Sean. Okay. You know Sean what? And I'm going to. Who provided it? I'm going to partake because. Good. Thank you. Because it'll make you feel it better because you're stressed out. So I'm going to. This why it doesn't stress you out when somebody. We, we pre planned this and we got the show notes together and we. No, you know, I, I, I get disappointed. Yeah? Not stressed. I get disappointed. But this makes you happy, buddy. I'd like to say it was because 
the flight problems. Not the case. When you get the airline ticket that says you're not going to arrive till two hours late, you're actually setting yourself up for disaster. Mmm, really good. This is real peanut butter, it says on there. That's what it, it says. It's a good thing we had good weather, because if it was bad weather, they could have been four, five, six hours. Mm. Not get here till tomorrow, where I'll be in uh, Michigan. Right, you're flying tomorrow because you have to be someplace on Monday. Mm. So is it a cultural thing, or what is it? I don't know, but I'm going to ask, what is it with Latin and not being on time? I don't and think this is very debonair and are of they, the two of you. And are they, are they concerned about it, or are they stressed out right now? No. They're running late. Nothing at all. No, nothing at all. It's like I was telling everybody before the story, uh, before the show started. People have been invited to Cuban weddings, parents of the bride, who have missed the wedding because it's the cultural thing to be late. It just makes no sense. Yeah, you, you missed the whole thing. Yes. And they're okay with that. Yep. Yep. And it's not, is it a fashionably late thing? Is no, it, fashionably cool? late is 10 minutes. Yeah. Two hours and 40 minutes is just not debonair. To me, fashionably late is 50 minutes early because I like to be an hour early for everything. I like to leave early. So if like I'm, I'm the first to leave. Yeah, I like to be the first one to get there and the first one to leave. I like to be the second one to leave. I'm out watching, always watching for the first one to go. <laughs> I, I saw that and at the wedding. You were looking around. Yeah. When's somebody going to leave? As soon as I they go, leave. then the door's open. Well, I gave you the wide opening. I had a gig that night, and I, I left early. You could have left right after me. Well, I think I was. I, maybe one before you, one after you. All right, let's let's cut and light it because always smoking a cigar makes me feel better, too. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo was the brand while all other brands were running late. No, I mean raising prices. <laughs> Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. excellence. So this is a um, Corona? It's a Corona. Yeah, petite Corona maybe. I think it's a legit Corona. Unfinished foot though. What do they call it? It's a different name to it though. Jenny Alice or some yeah. Jenny Alice or something like that. Instead of just calling it the Corona that it is. Because they're late. You're just going to find <laughs> something wrong with everything today. It is. That's going to be part of it. So let's light it. The bomber. The bomber. The bomber. For when you have a guest that doesn't arrive on enough. <laughs> this is the Vertigo Bomber. It features a flip out bullet punch. Three jets powered by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. The Vertigo Bomber is also a full metal jacket, making this an award-winning lighter at $24.99. Unbelievable value. But not one to travel with because it is a full metal jacket. Right. But it looks like a lot of, a lot of lighter here. Cold cutter, big tank. So we're drawing in the first draw of an unfinished foot, so we're actually drawing in the tobacco from the wrapper. Get that taste right off the bat. Now, do you light a cigar differently that has the unfinished foot like this? Do you, instead of toasting it, do you take pull directly? I think I toast it less. Okay. Because it's it's catching on fire, right? Yeah, I usually skip the whole toasting process on an unfinished foot, which is yeah. probably not a smart thing to do. But I want to get that initial taste of that now wrapper. And, and probably a better move because what we are doing by toasting the wrapper, scorching it, and drawing in the scorched flavor to it, it kind of doesn't make sense to have an unfinished finished foot. Now, there's, there's a difference between one that is a shaggy foot where all the tobacco is hanging out the end. But in this case, they actually trimmed the cigar before they put the wrapper on it, which is the yes. opposite of what usually happens. You put the wrapper on, then you trim right. it. Yes. So now you're putting the wrapper on, and then you you must be trimming some because usually there's a lot hanging off, and then it's just a little bit. I actually never saw the process of doing that. Neither have I. Yeah? So, it, and the reason behind it has to be nothing but fluff, basically, I think. Right? Yeah. There's no... Uh, the uncircumcised cigar. Yeah? The uncircumcised cigar. Do I need to leave the two of you alone? <laughs> Not at all. So the, the show notes aren't going to work out at all, by the way, because this is the second hour, and uh, you know now I'm asking you if you uh, understood what he had talked about because he hasn't. <laughs> well, talked. I can answer that question, Dave. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what he's talking about right now. Um, yeah, and and I did speak to him at, at the trade show, 
and he started off very good, you know, with all the hellos and all that stuff. And then when it got into talking business, that's when uh, Adrian, uh, who stepped in, uh, going to be coming in with him, and then took it from there. Um, but that became part of the problem, so we'll see where that goes. Next week, though, we have on the show Rocky Patel from Rocky Patel Cigars. And when uh, Barry gets to all the news that happened this week, Rocky is going to be a perfect person to talk to next week to kind of say what's going on uh, in the world of cigars because the guy has been, uh, you know, if you don't see him that much at doing events and stuff in stores in the past few years, that's because he's been in Washington, D.C. just about every day, man. I, mean, I went to Washington, D.C. all the time. I, I think I counted 12 times I've been to D.C. over, <coughs> over the uh, tobacco legislation. But every single time I went, he was there. And he's there all the time. He's done everything but move in. So we'll have Rocky on there, and he'll discuss some of those things that are happening. Um, on August 19th, um, and Barry told me today he's actually going to be here for it, uh, we have Eric Hansen from Here and Sickle. That is our annual predictions episodes. Boy, they are piling up. Oh, my Predictions God. are coming on, and uh, we've got a lot going on there. Um, we have Julio Aroa from JRE Cigars coming in September. And um, next week on the show, um, we should have an entire new sound studio. Don't start making promises that you can't keep. It looks like we're going to happen. It looks, there's been a lot of things that have looked like they were going to happen. Does it, seem, does it seem a little echoey? A little bit. A little because bit. Because we got Am empty room and new yeah. paints. Yeah. Some things are down. So it, it, it will actually sound different. Everything's going to be different. It'll have a different look to it, a different sound to it. And we can tell you uh, we'll be drinking coffee, I think, along with. Because coffee is for closers. Are we going to put something in the coffee? No, you alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to drink regular coffee black, like men. I don't know if I do that. Yeah? A, li a little anisette, maybe? Nah. Everything nah. with you has to be added. Just drink it normal. Just drink it straight. There's nothing normal about it. You know, I think this was the better thing of the uh, cigars, the order of cigars we're on. I'm happier because I think that one is quite a bit stronger. The I knew we were day. smoking it on the show, so I didn't smoke it in the store. Because that's in the care package. But this one, the last call, would have been perfect as the last cigar. But maybe. Maybe it's better that we're building up an immunity to this. Now, there's another last call. This is the Habano, but the other one. There's a Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Okay. Which is in my wheelhouse, but we've probably been a little too strong for the two of you. Okay. <clears throat> it's a fuller body, a little bit earthier, a little bit more coffee notes. I um, kind of like Barry way over there. Yeah? I don't. I kind of like it. I went years of therapy for when I sat at the kids' table for Thanksgiving, and then you guys put me back over here. Because we and thought not for nothing, I'm sitting below the stage, so I feel really small. Yeah. So I'll pull your pants back up, up and you'll change, be better. Huh? For a change? Yeah. But we have two, you know, an interpreter and AJ that we're going to sit here, and you messed everything up, guys. You messed it all up. But anyway, uh, that's it. Let's uh, Right now it's time to hear the Don Raphael Offer of the Day brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? And it's $100. And it's it, it's perfect because I've actually attempted this last week. Showing really? Up on time. Twerk for one minute <laughs> on video and upload it on social media. I don't know why I haven't thought of this sooner because I, I'd do that for free. So I did a cigar dinner last week. Did anybody here go to that cigar dinner? At, at the Tuscan market, and I'm up, I'm up with the microphone explaining the cigar, and somebody said dance, and I didn't know what to do at that point, so I turned my back to everybody and I twerked, and then everybody goes and the grabs one the time I miss a dinner. Everybody goes to grab the phones. I do it for a few seconds. I'm in, and then as the phones lift up, I said, Oh no, I have to stop right now because this could last forever, and they could. You know, put together and make it drag on or whatever, so I can't even let it a second. But this is do it for a minute. You would have been a now, GIF meme. Now you're, you know, that's it. You're stuck for life. Hundred bucks too. It's not much. I'd do it. Yeah, for free. I'm thinking about doing it this afternoon now. No pass. Yeah, you can't, right? No. no. AJ, would you do it? No. See, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. We we could. Would that be interesting? Interviewing somebody who wasn't here. And then answering for them because they were late. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You just you just gotta let it go, man. Yeah, let it go. All right. So, uh, what do we think of flavors and things on the uh, last call? And the reason for the last call, I believe, was this was right before FDA uh, stamped down, and this was AJ's last thing he put out because it was the last call to put something out. Uh, well, he came out with the Puro uh, New World. That uh, was a phantom brand, brand. It's no longer a phantom brand. Yeah, but I think it was the whole thing was um, the last call, the last cigar of the day. Oh, okay. This came out considerably before the eighth, August eighth. Okay, okay. So uh, what do you say, AJ? No, okay. I'm he's getting. O- uh, he's okay with whatever. You guys have had uh, salada tea, but have you ever put the tea bag in your mouth? I have salada tea right here. So right here, you know what? It's just of tea. so easy about the tea bag being in your mouth. I just I, I didn't even think of that. I gotta leave it alone. I didn't even think of that. I wouldn't have said it had I thought of it, but I have sucked on a tea bag or two in my day. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and uh, this is very reminiscent of this will make you a bad guy. The tea <laughs> actually it after does. it's been <laughs> makes you a bad guy. in the hot water. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll twerk right now. There we go. Let's finish it off. Yeah, so I what music was playing when you twerk, Dave? Was it, you know, Sir Mix a lot? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. But it was just at the moment. Mm-hmm. Let me just do it. The, the crowd roared, and then the phones went up. Nowadays, you know, you can't do anything. You got a, a second or two if you want to do something funny, but you just got to be careful. Got to be careful. Well, I mean, what bad could happen that you twerked eh, on social good. media? Ah, uh, I don't want to do it. Plus, I'm sure I wasn't doing it well. It was my first. That I'm quite it was my first. It was first, my first try. It wasn't like I practiced it beforehand, like you have done. I'm sure, right? You ever twerk? Of course. You, Barry, did you ever do it? No. Never even attempted it. Never even attempted. It. Yeah. So you got a bad back, right? You yes. could hurt something. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. How about flavors on the cigar? Let's talk about the cigar for a second. There's an underlying sweetness, almost a little bit of vanilla, um, definitely some earth. Started out a little bit cedar-like, but. It, it's gotten a little bit darker, a little bit oak, and uh, no tea. I think I nailed it. This is some BS. Not because I'm tasting my tea and tasting this, I don't see it. I like to go back when you said something like that. Here's the tea. Never sucked on a tea bag though before. Oh, it's tea all day. Yeah. Salada. Cedar. I get some cedar. I'll cedar. give you that. All right, let's go to break. When we come back. Gentlemen, Jonathan, no. Uh, classic three-way, and we will prepare for A.J. Fernandez when we get back. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Walking in, you're greeted with the aroma of friendship. You move to the humidor and reach into the hallmark molded steel box, retrieving the only cigar worthy of such elegant protection. Your cut is meticulous, the light easy and full. Your taste buds are immediately inundated with a barrage of wood and rare spice flavors, all finished with a trademark plume of smoke. Moscow City Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the Silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up. The Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium Diamond Crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium Diamond Crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or Diamond Crown Lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar. Or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, 
I was surprised. Kristoff cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Kristoff is just that. But there's something else happening here. The natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes. Four sizes, including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacco Lira Palma, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Coloto Cubano, Yo-Yo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot, La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Phil Zangi from Debonair Cigars and Rum, and thank you for listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Retail's Radio Network. And we are back, live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Set. Gentleman Jonathan is going to do it debonair style because he's on time. Well, Barry gets crazy in the asylum because he's here too. No, we're here uh, to interview A.J. Fernandez and Adrian Acosta from A.J. Fernandez Cigars, but they are late and they'll be here uh, hopefully. Before the in, show's over. Before the show is over. <laughs> would be nice. Yes, it would be good. Uh, we're, we are smoking the last call, and this is the last call for A.J. Fernandez. The last call. Uh, by A.J. Fernandez. This is the Habano. It was a Corona. Boy, am I digging Coronas. I'm really liking corona size cigars lately. I, I saw a lot at the trade show. It was a good thing because in the past we've had a lot of 60, 70, 80, 90, yeah. uh, 120. Yeah. It's been out of control. It was sure. good to see the, the shorter format, thinner format cigar coming back. Yeah. Um, I enjoy them. I know you're not a huge fan of the Lanceros. Yeah, too thin. But this one, were we 42? This is 48. Is there, it 48? Yeah, there is a 46. Isn't it amazing so how... So really, it's a, it's a old school Robusto. It's, because th that would be the ring gauge going back 20 years. It seems so small because everything is so big. But boy, I like it. This is really, really perfect uh, size. And when you're going to go to multiple cigars, you're going to smoke multiple cigars. If I smoke nothing but cigars of this size, I'd probably smoke eight a day. Right? Welcome to my world. Yeah. But you normally go for, if somebody offers you that, you go to Robusto maybe? Yeah. I mean, the highest I'll, I'll willingly go on my own is 52. Uh, but when I when I purchase, I try to keep it between 44 and 50. Too. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. 
Or what's, what's up? up in the cigar world? Brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. I'm going to bang out the ones that we're probably not going to discuss. Okay. Um, in some good news, the governor of Maine vetoed the proposed Saw that. increase for tobacco to 21. Good for him. In vetoing the move, the governor stated, I'm tired of living in a society where we social engineer our lives. And IPCPR has decided to combat declining attendance at the trade show by raising display space <laughs> $3 a square foot. There you go. Mm. But what everybody <laughs> wants to talk about was the fact that yesterday the U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced a new plan on regulating tobacco products that includes extending the pre-market application deadline for cigars. Little exhale for the for the cigar industry, especially the small, small guys. Guy. Yeah, they get at least four years from now, three additional years from the initial um, date. And think about the ones that ended up throwing some brands in at the last second. How well that played out. That for played them. out all those. Yeah. Phantom Blanche, yeah. a better way of putting it. Now have a few years to get out yep. there. Uh, it means that the FDA is extending its deadline of three years for manufacturers to submit their pre-market applications, which will now be August 8, 2021. Still unfortunate is that the new deadline applies only to cigars that were on market as of August 8, 2016, which means no new cigars can come out. Still, still, yeah. and this was a little bit on social media. People thought that the whole thing would be lifted, but no new cigars that were not introduced prior to that date can come out on the market. Uh, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, who was just appointed commissioner of the FDA two months ago, spoke about reducing levels of nicotine in cigarettes. And as we know, uh, nicotine in cigars are far less. Very, very few. We're talking under 10 percent. Tomatoes, eggplants, you know, it's... In that level, so they'll have to get the uh, tomatoes and eggplant off the, off the market if they try to pull that. The FDA also stated that it'll take a fresh look at the treatment of premium cigars under the agency's current regulatory structure, which means all the people that have been speaking up for us in the Senate, yeah. especially Marco Rubio, finally maybe got through to the FDA. And uh, they've hinted that premium cigars could possibly get exempted during, from the FDA's final rule in the future. Um, that'll probably take an act of Congress, uh, but we now have four more years to get that to be pushed through. Could it possibly be a little Rudy Giuliani showing up at our trade show and making something happen right after it happened? You, you never know, know. The behind the scenes stuff that end up is what we hoped would happen. Something happened. And uh, the FDA commissioner also said that the agency will open up a new rulemaking process to engage with premium cigar industry to better understand products. And it was also reported that the FDA commissioner said he is asking for the Tobacco Center leadership to explore a process by which it could ask for new information relating to patterns of use and resulting public health impact on premium cigars. And uh, they also promised to be a little bit more forthcoming on what was needed to get the um, um, substantial equivalent. Right. Um, right now, nobody really knew what that was. What does that mean? And right? In three weeks, they're supposed to be releasing a new document that will make that a little bit easier to understand. And, uh, you know, of everybody who's applied to be grandfathered since this thing began, so far there's only been three companies that have had anything approved. Yeah. Altatus had a couple approved. Cuban Stock had a couple right. of few, uh, approved. And Illusioni just had their original document line approved. Yeah. So part of this delay could also be the fact that the FDA realized that they're never going to get these things approved in time. Yeah, and they themselves need more time, but at least they're going to be a little bit more transparent in what is needed for substantial. Well, reforms. one thing the FDA also said back, and I was uh, partaked in a lot of the meetings that happened, uh, is that they weren't allowed to change the date, and here they are changing the date. They said, well, they know, didn't change the predicate date, right? And that's always change, been what the what the issue has right. been. They just changed the date by which the documentation has to get in by. Right. There was a lawsuit um, that was heard last week by Nico Puro e-cigarette, and the company lost their motion for a summary judgment against the FDA 
And notably, the court said that the FDA does not have the power to change the grandfather date. That can only be changed by Congress. Okay. So that 2007 date, you need an act of Congress to. Be All right. So that that is not being even messed around with. It. That, Doesn't uh, it seem a little bit like so right now wag the dog, where they're just they're just flashing up a couple of little tiny wins so that they can continue making the push, and we're all applauding, and people are going to relax. Yeah, listen, th th this is a war, and we just want a little battle. A little I, team I, I'm going to play devil's all. advocate. Yeah. That's what I do in one yeah. of pissing people off. But well, that's part of your charm. Four years from now, we'll have a different president, maybe. And yeah. maybe they realize if they did this now, that it wouldn't get past the president's desk. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're thinking, all right, if we put this off for four years and Trump doesn't get reelected, we have a better chance. Yeah. I mean, that's another way of looking at it. I don't know. Yeah. It Th seems this like is, you think this is the way the FDA is thinking of this? The FDA didn't even want it. Didn't even want uh, cigars. And I came out and said, we don't even want it. We got enough problems as it is. But at least, you know, th this guy in charge now is looking at it and say, there's no doubt that this product is different. And he's yeah. written papers on that in right. the past before he yeah. was the head of the FDA. Yeah. So anyway, that's the big news. Yeah, and that's what's up in the cigar world. What's up in the cigar world was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian broadleaf filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the cigar of the year. Recluse Cigars is what's up. Okay, Mr. Jonathan, you got something in the mailbag? That I do. Uh, we just got a letter. I'm going to punch you. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Miller writes, Dear gentlemen, as I sit by the bay enjoying one of my last cigars before returning back to China, I wanted to send a great thanks to the guys in the Seabrook store as well as Dave, who I was fortunate enough to meet a few times and enjoy a cigar and conversation with. My enthusiasm as a fan of the shows was equally matched by the staff's helpfulness and knowledge of cigars. I enjoyed each trip there and will miss sitting in the shops, smoking and talking with your regular customers, who also made the experience even better. On my first drive to the shop, I was so excited because I knew Dave was going to be there, and I, I jumped out of my car and left it running the entire time without realizing it until it was time to go. Sad. It's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> my wife said that made me the ash hole of the <laughs> Yes, it did. It did. I didn't make it down oh. to Salem and didn't get a chance to meet Mr. J, but through email, he turned me on to Santarpio's, which was a home run. Home run. And that's the best. can thank him in person that's next time. That's the best time pizza I you're going to get in China, that's for sure. Yeah, it's good. I made him talk Chinese and stuff. You could do it. Perfect. No kidding. Yeah. Well, he lives there, so he has to deal with it, but it's pretty cool looking at a, a regular white guy talking Chinese. You know, it's just a weird... How do you know he wasn't making it up? He could have been. He could have been. But it sounded really good. <laughs> sounded real good. So uh, right now it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho ho. Hee hee. Ha ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, take no prisoner. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. Why this one might go for a strikeout with my sports challenge friends to the left of me, I'm going to go with it anyway. Here we go. During Thursday night's 22-10 route of the Texas Rangers at the hands of the Florida Marlins, Rangers third baseman Adrian Beltre decided to inject some humor into the game other than the football score. Is this baseball or football? Baseball. Okay. With his team trailing, Adrian Beltre moved outside the on-deck circle to get a better view of the pitcher he would soon be facing. Not an uncommon move as many batters cheat the rule, and a lot of umpires don't strictly enforce it. Noticing Beltre was way outside the on-deck circle, second base umpire Jerry Davis ordered Beltre to get back in the designated warm-up spot. Unhappy with the umpire, Adrian Beltre decided to drag the on-deck circle to where he was standing, causing him to be tossed from the game. Ah. And with the score the way it was, we can't say we blame him. Afterwards, during the post-game interview, when asked about the turn of events, 
He said there was no need for the ejection, as he did exactly what the umpire told him to. That's not only insane, it's asylum. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm, where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away. So they're going to make some rule changes, I bet. Not very debonair. I think the rule already exists. I don't think they need any more rules. You can't move the on-deck circle. It doesn't or you say get that. Ejected. It says you have to stay in the on-deck circle. He wasn't in the on-deck circle when he moved the on-deck circle. Well, he was going back to the on-deck circle. But he, he took too long to get in it. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, I was smoking the last call. We're still waiting on A.J. Fernandez. I keep looking out at the door to see if he's popping in. But uh, they're like a little kid waiting for Santa Claus. It's already we're, we're, we're two we're two thirty five out, two hours and thirty five minutes. You're just gonna give yourself undue stress by even thinking about it. Just keep going on with your life. At the top of the hour, I'm interviewing you on AJ Fernandez questions. <laughs> Bring it so on! I hope you I hope you've got it going on because we're gonna ask you some tough questions. Can't about you wrap about this about year's crop. Just say no habla anyway. Ah, uh, you did. <laughs> there we go. Is it debonair? Or somebody to show up this late. It's not debonair to be late ever. Barring a death in the family. Okay. And even then, you still try to show up on time. All right. While you're enjoying Life Goes Full, it's important to be debonair. How to be more debonair-like is Gentleman Jonathan. You need a gentleman? Gentleman. I'm a gentleman. You need a gentleman? <laughs> you wouldn't want to call me. You need a gentleman. And the gentleman's way is brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. Debonair Cigars provide their clients with suspension of reality. Time spent smoking a debonair can never be subtracted from one's life. We've all been there, gentlemen. You get all excited to hear someone speak and halfway through you realize that this guy is less passionate about teaching you what he knows and more passionate about the sound of his own voice. This seminar has a one-way ticket to Boringville, USA, and you're stuck in the front row. It is debonair to excuse yourself to go to the bathroom and not come back. Or, if it's a long-day event, you may wait for the lunch break to make your escape. However, under no circumstances should you start up a conversation with the person next to you and become a distraction. The person who is speaking is in that position because, by some miracle, they earned it, and you owe them the respect you would want if you were in their shoes. Listen, or at least pretend to listen, while you're in that room, and that's the gentleman's way. The question is, are you debonair or not? Well, and, and be on time. Yeah. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to a conference, um, actually Monday, but obviously flying out Sunday so that I won't be late. But... Uh, two-day conference, Sunday and Monday, just guest speakers the whole time. It'll be one after the other after the other. So I don't want to hear any reports of you and Ed chit-chatting while the guys talk. you got to sit there and at least pretend to listen. But I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm going is to listen. I want to learn, right? This is better. Listen, we, we saw it at our cigar event. We had cigar tasting. We yep. had eight guys here, and the two over here decided they want to chit-chat while you're Teaching him how to cut and light this, the cigar. This week? This week. Okay. And then the guy's cigar comes unraveled, and it's because he didn't pay attention ah. while you were showing him how to cut it. All right. I saw him the whole time licking the thing to get it to stick back on. and I mean, you gave him a safety cutter, but he still managed to cut too much because he wasn't listening. He wasn't paying attention. So are you paying attention to the cigar? The A.J. Fernandez, last call. The T is bouncing back and forth between that cedar note, and I think it's because you both said it that it brought it to my attention. The cedar comes forward and then kind of recedes a little bit, and I'm back to tea and then back to cedar. I, I think it's very good. I don't know if we uh, it was brought to my attention when we were doing that mailbag from our friend in China, but I taste sweet and sour. Sweet and sour with some pepper. I Black no pepper, sweet and sour. I nailed it, right? You nailed no it. Sweet pepper. and sour. No, that sounded pickless for me. No. Do you get the sweet and sour chicken? I've never had sweet and sour chicken in my life. Do you ever have sweet and sour anything? You taste no. the sweet and sour sauce? No. So you don't know that it's wrong. It's wrong. No, There's it's, a yin-yang thing going is. on. You got a little sweet and sour going little on. Tea, I like it. A little cedar. little tea. little cedar. I agree. 
If we weren't on iHeartRadio, I don't get the tea at all. I'm I would break tea. my eight-year reign of no swearing on the show. Want to taste some? To sad? tell you to f yourself. Go ahead. I got no, your tea. Want to taste some tea? No, I don't want to taste yours. There's one sip left. It's all backwash. Yeah. <laughs> It's disgusting. It's the best pot. It's all warm <laughs> stuff. <laughs> this tastes like sepsis. No, I'm the burn line on this cigar is like yeah. ultra, ultra thick. Yeah. All it's right. Not overpowering. I'm, it's, it's getting down low, but it's good. I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm almost got also a little almost gingerbread like quality to it. More on the finish as an afterthought than in your face. Are you just making stuff up over there? Wow, the producer nailed it, right? <laughs> I am the following message was charge. submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. We just got a letter. Quick question, guys. My father-in-law generously gave me an unopened box of cigars. He's just ignoring that, huh? He had them for at least a couple of months, and they were not in a humidor. His humidor was already full. I put the box in my humidor. And I have a bag of 85% beads in there, and it holds right on. I'm sorry, 65% beads, and it holds right on at 65 per my digital hygrometer. All right, now go back for one second. He's got a full humidor. He got a box of cigars. He couldn't his fit them in. His father has a box of cigars. His father-in-law had a box of cigars that he couldn't fit in his humidor. So he gives him the box of cigars. Months later. Correct. Okay, got it. Uh, the question is, should I open the box or leave it sealed? I live in Florida, so it's not like they could really have gotten that dry. They probably didn't. I'm not sure if opening the box will give the sticks too much humidity too quickly. Thoughts? Topless or keep the top on? Ah, topless. I would go topless. No, you just leave it the way it is. It's, it's perfect. Unless you want to examine the cigars to see if something bad happened. But I'm sure. Put it in the humidor. You just or crack the lid. Put it in there. I'm assuming it's a slide top box, but I don't Why know would you assume of, that? What's I'm just difference? making the assumption. Yeah. Yeah. It's a what, slide top box in my mind. And I would crack it a little. And the only thing I would want to do is taking somebody else's cigars. Father, it doesn't matter who it is. I want to open the box of cigars and examine them before I'm going to yeah. add them into my collection in case you don't want bugs or anything like that. Correct. Stuff. Something yeah. I just want to examine and make sure it's fine and then bring it back. Right. And if they're in such horrible condition, yeah. that it's going to be almost impossible to resurrect them. You don't want to be the guy to get the blame. In Florida, though, yeah. right? Yeah. It's perfect. If anything, it's too much. Yeah, which could create the bug issue. Right. Right. Temperature. Did he keep them cool? Were they were supposed to be cool? I would open them up to examine and make sure they're okay. That's my answer. Pretty good. Final answer. Good. Okay. It's time for the Classic Three Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. But now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day, I don't anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history, is looking at you, kid. brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste. The classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. All right, I'm calling in for the left-hander. Sean, are you left-handed? Come on, you're left-handed today. Come on up. You're always a good sport. You jump in here. Grab that last one uh, seat at the end. Barry, you got that for the mic? I'll wait for him to put it on, but I think I do. Okay. There we go. Good. Hi, Sean. Hey, Dave. Thanks for the ho-hos. I didn't study this time. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Yeah, because you thought we had way too many guests, but you didn't, couldn't imagine they wouldn't show up. No. There we go. First time in the history of the show, I think. So what do you think of the ho-ho? I haven't had it yet. Oh, really? Exceptional. Well, thank you. Exceptional. Barry's our champion. Barry, nice. you okay over there? I'm ready to re repeat. Okay, so today is July 29th, and it's Benito Mussolini's birthday. Italian dictator who came to power after his success of the uh, March of Rome. He threw out his country's constitution in favor of a dictatorship, and he allied Hitler. After the Allied invasion of Italy 
He was captured while trying to escape north and hung by the Italians in Milan. He is credited for creating fascism. Mussolini, born today, what year? 1891. 1891, Mr. J. 1881. 1883. 1893. Everybody is very, very close. But it's 1881, Mr. Jonathan, that takes the point. 1883 was the winner. Boom. Two points off from that far. Pretty, pretty damn good, I must say. Over to you, Sean. Today is Louis Vincent's birthday. Louis Vincent. Anything? Nothing. Nothing. Vince McMahon. Very close. Also known as Lou Albano. Do you know who uh, Lou Albano is? Yeah, the guy with the rubber bands. There we go. He's an Italian-American professional wrestler, manager, and actor, the late great. He was active in professional wrestling before becoming a manager. Over the course of his 42-year career, Albano guided 15 different tag team champions and four single competitive championships to gold. Unique showman uh, with the elongated beard with rubber bands and facial piercings. And loud outfits. He collaborated with Cindy Lauper and helped uh, usher in the wrestling's crossover success to mainstream audience. He's also well known to the new generation fans as the actor who voiced Mario in Super Mario Brothers. Lou Albano, born today, what year? 1946. Uh, 1946. Barry. Can I phone a friend? Can I reach out to Jonathan Carney? You cannot. Uh, then I'm going to go 1940. 40. I think they're both over. I'm going 1935. 35, and they were both over, but so are you. 1933. Off by two again. 1933. No. And this goes over to you, Mr. Jonathan. Theodore A. Atlas Jr., better known as Teddy Atlas. Any idea? Is he a wrestler? No, he is not. He's an American boxing trainer and fight commentator. You guys know who he is? Teddy Atlas, assistant trainer of the teenage protege, J. Mike Tyson. However, Atlas left the camp following alterations with the 15-year-old Tyson after Tyson had been sexually inappropriate with an 11-year-old female relative of Atlas. Tyson uh, grabbed her in the butt, as apparently what uh, Atlas said. Uh, Atlas uh, put a 38 caliber handgun to Tyson's ear and told him to never touch her again, and uh, that was the end of him with, with Tyson. But uh, Teddy Atlas, born today, what year? 1955. 55. Sean? 1956. 56. Barry, do you know, even know who this is either? Yeah, I have a vague idea. Okay, he has what? that flat nose. Yes, he does. He's on Showtime. There's a scar on his face. Yeah. Yeah. Barry's looking yeah. at his picture on uh, Instagram right now. 1951. 51. Somebody's got two points. Sean. 56. Damn Didn't even know who he was. Two no points. Clue. Imagine that. I thought the price is right at you. Okay, we have one question left, and Sean is leading two to one to Barry zero. Barry is our champion, and he needs two points just to tie. And it's happened this day. Happened this day, and it goes to. Give it to Sean. No, no. Who's it go to? It goes to. <laughs> I was just. I just went. It so go, it's got to be Sean. Go to me because it's the uh, one oh, question. Okay, it's you. Uh, in New York City, this helps you. Happened this day. David Berkowitz, a.k.a. the son of Sam, kills one person and seriously wounds another in his first of the series of attacks of the son of Sam. You lived there at the time, right? Yes, sir. You remember, son of Sam. 1977. 77. Mr. J. 59. 59. 74. 74 for the point and win, Sean. Three to one to zero. What was it, 75, 76? 76. 76. 76. Very good. Good job, man. Thank you. Good job. That's Sean. He brings uh, the snacks in and uh, helps us out here all the time. And uh, Nothing, AJ. Nothing. No, nothing. No sign of AJ Fernandez. Adrian Acosta, our guest for the 12 o'clock hour for the event in the store at 10 o'clock. And we're uh, coming close to the uh, 1 o'clock hour. Should we be worried? Are we prepared to continue another hour? We can go all day. We can go all day. You're awfully optimistic. Yeah. So we're smoking the last call, and this is his last call. When do we when do we pull the trigger and say uh, you missed your your shot? Never, right? Yeah, I don't think you have to. Yeah. Pull it. <laughs>
be happy for the content. My cigar went out on me, but I'm, I'm, I'm nubbing it. Well, you almost don't have a choice. I mean, to be able to pull an hour out of this, you certainly have to go past the band. But I do have to say, for such a small cigar, slow burning, yeah, got almost an hour out of it. That's something that surprises me all the time about cigars by the ring gauge and by the length. The length seems to be the only thing that dictates the amount of time you smoke a cigar. And we know I did that experiment with the 60 ring gauge and the 50 ring gauge, and yeah. they smoked almost identical. So it, it does always amaze me that we're able to get such a short cigar and smoke it for so so long. Well, this is the size of that Macanudo that went three hours, right? Three hours is the current world record. Three hours and 20 seconds. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. We're, we're, struggling, stay, we're struggling to get an hour. So This from the guy who says he could break the record. I'm not trying right now, but I definitely put my foot in my mouth with that one. Yeah, you would have first out. Yep. Come to think of it. First out. The cigars are reminding me right now of a Bavarian pretzel. Really? Yeah. Little, little bready. Yeah. Little what, bready. What is the difference between a regular pretzel and a no, Bavarian pretzel? soft pretzel, right? Correct. The one you get in the in the circus or whatever. Go to circus? Or for yeah. the, the dirty, carnival? Go no. to dirty water dog vendors in New York City. Yeah. Victor knows what I'm talking about. Hmm. So a soft pretzel. A soft That's pretzel. what you're going with. That's what I'm going with. I can see it. I can see it. The the sweetness, I think, w went away. Yeah, it's gone a, a little on the tannic side. I'm stick I'm sticking with my tea though. This is this is tea where you really? put two tea bags in the in the water. Yeah, heavy tea. He's not buying it. You're selling it, but he's not buying it. Yeah, yeah. You know, for all I do for Barry during the week, to, so he doesn't have to he's, come here. He's telling you the truth, though. I take care of him. I get him all set I'm up. I'm looking out for you. A good friend tells the truth. He doesn't stroke the ego. Yeah, we didn't want to be like the asshole show that they're all agreeing with each other all the time. It makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> you ever listen? Yes, I listen every week. They agree with each other constantly. We, yeah, they're, they're like-minded people. Pisses me off. <laughs> you got to put somebody controversial in there. Yes. Yes, you've been on. I've been on. Yeah. I appreciate Jonathan's you going been with on. me for controversy. There's only one person in this group who hasn't been on or asked to be on. Isn't that interesting? I think because they choose, they choose they, not exactly, to. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they get an hour that, off from you. That's on purpose? Is that on purpose? Poor Oliver's office is right next to yours. Mm. That's why he's on the road so often. Amen to that. I know. As I blame I, him. I know who I am. I saw him yesterday with his protege. Yes. Yes. He's out there... Uh, Hitting the streets. Hitting the streets. This is a tough time right now because everybody's coming back from the trade show over-ordered, over-spent their money, and then the reps go out there to try to get sales, and these guys are just receiving the stuff in. So stuff is just starting to pour in. I got a question for you. Have you ever ordered something from the show, gotten back, have not yet received the product, but had buyer's remorse? Yeah. Have you ever called up the manufacturer no. and said, I changed my mind? No. Only when the year is changing. So now it would be December. And it still hasn't shown up. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And now we're looking for inventory levels to go down because we have to pay taxes on old, uh, inventory that's higher than there. And at that point, I call them up and say, it never came. Did you ever do Yeah, we're getting to it or something. I'm like, you know what? Cancel the order. We'll talk again the first of the year because what's the sense of taking it in uh, at that point? And, but we have ordered stuff at the show, placed the order. They were very excited about getting the order. And actually never shipped it, nor never contacted us ever again. It must have just been lost. Mm -hmm. And I don't contact them again, and it's just forgotten. I placed the order. You didn't send it. There were two cigars, I remember. One was that Bichon. It was that light bulb looking thing. A cigar yes. that was smoked in the pipe. Yep. I ordered a metric S ton of those, and they never showed up. And the other one was that football one. Yeah. We wanted those for the anniversary party, and the guy promised the world. We wanted hundreds of these things. Hundreds. Yeah. And they never showed. Yeah. Nor did we ever hear from them ever again. They were so excited. They set up at a trade show. They're showing these two things off. Same guy, was it? Same, Same guy? guy? Same guy. Very excited. The biggest order he got of the whole show. Never shipped it. Never called us on it. Never nothing. Did he not believe it? Maybe. Or maybe he went out of business. Yeah. Before he got started. Yeah. And, 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 and there's more of that happening. We're going to get into that at uh, um, the, the show we do with uh, Eric Hansen and get into what we think is happening. But a lot of people didn't show up at the show. Um, Some people didn't show up on time to their show. Yeah, that does happen too. 
uh, just keep looking. There's nobody there. I'm not, yeah. n- now we're just uh, dragging it out at this point. Yeah, right? trying to get another two more minutes of fodder. Well, I got uh, another mailbag here for you. Yeah, we got plenty of mailbags. We can do the, all uh, just got a letter. We just got a letter. The message just, uh, was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. Hello, Cigar Authority. Hello. I have not sent too many emails to you guys, but upon hearing of Chuck's leaving the show, I felt I had to. Chuck will be greatly missed, not only by the guys on the show, but by all of us who listen to the show. I always looked forward to hearing from Chuck as he was very diplomatic and even-handed with his likes and dislikes of cigars and other topics. You, sir, are a true gentleman. And if I grow up to be half as much of a gentleman as you are, then the little corner of my world will be much better pla- a much better place. Thank you for all that you have done for the Cigar Authority, and best of luck to you and your family in your future endeavors. Signed, Rolf. Rolf. Ralph? Rolf. R-O-L-F. Really? Rolf. I think Chuck wrote that email. Have you heard from Chuck at all? I have not heard from I Chuck. I keep telling myself I'm going to call him, I'm going to call him, and then I don't, and very yeah. undebbed in there, and, and I feel horrible, and, and Chuck, if you're listening, the intention was there, yeah, I'm just a forgetful that, individual. That's like coming to an event or doing an interview and actually not showing up. It's not... <laughs> Will you just let it go? It's already happened. It's already happened. It's over. Just, it's not over, because we still have one hour to go, and <laughs> I, didn't even, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Today's one hour you episode could of Cigar Authority has been brought to you by. I don't know. What should we do? Should we go to break? We may as well. We'll go to break. And then uh, my notes are just ridiculous. So um, when we come back, uh, who the hell knows what we're going to do because we've been stood up. And I've been stood up by prettier people than A.J. Fernandez. I'll tell you that. Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what happens when we come back. He said 40 minutes. That was an hour ago. And uh, it just keeps getting worse and worse. So uh, we should start drinking. That's what we should do. What do you think, Barry? Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see what happens when we come back. Uh, you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars as Raphael Nodel has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Raphael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera. It will have you call it for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soil of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at TwoGuysCigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will 
to be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Mattel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named the Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Loto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Loto de Oro, creating a medium to full body, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. It was 2010 on my 50th birthday. Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars showed up in my office and honored me with a gift. It was a box of cigars. But this box of cigars was not what I expected. One I never saw before. Something without the Perdomo name on it. It was my name, Garofalo. Garofalo Cigars has my name on it, but it was blended and created by Perdomo as a gift. A gift of a brand of cigars. So what should you expect from a Garofalo cigar? Rich layers of complex flavors, but often in a mild to medium body profile. A blend comprised of fine Cuban seed Nicaraguan tobaccos, including a triple fermented five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. I'm honored to have Garofalo, my name, surrounding such a wonderful cigar. I would be honored if you would give a Garofalo cigar a try. Garofalo Cigars, an honor. This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. It's just too far. Yeah. There's too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. We got to keep our composure. With your host, Come on, Diablo. David Garofalo. Count of three. Name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One, two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Very stunning. What an incredible Cinderella story. This I know comes out of nowhere. A former greenskeeper now about to become the Masters champion. It's time to light them up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good housekeeping. For the Cigar Authority. Can we just become best friends? Yep. And we are back with our one number two. Today, A.J. Fernandez quickly becoming a legend in the cigar industry, creating big name brands for other people, producing blends in some of the biggest names in the world while building his own brand all in record time. Speaking of record time, he is very late. Is that him walking through the door? I don't know. Uh, I don't Welcome, know everybody. Either. We're back on the Cigar Authority with our number two. Uh, we've been stood up by... Uh, 
Nobody. You've never been stood up, really. Never. I mean, this, never stand up. this is the this is the first. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting now over eight years and the longest continually running cigar podcast. Voted the ambassadors of cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Voted the top ten educational podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or visit our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. I hope there wasn't an accident or anything, but it's the only excuse. If there was an accident, you could let that slide, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's traffic. It's whatever. I actually feel bad about that one time I stood up a girl in college right now because yeah. I know how it feels. Yeah, it's really just wrong. Anyway, we're smoking this block of a cigar, uh, almost square, almost square, and this is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package. This is the A.J. Fernandez New World. Is it the New World Reserve or is it New World? New World. Just New World, yep. right? All right, it's got a... Uh, I actually want an ice cream sandwich holding on to this. Yeah, chocolatey type uh, wrapper. And is there ever a time you don't want an ice cream sandwich? Yeah, when it's like three degrees outside. Really? Hey, too cold for ice cream. Oh, no. I could go for an ice cream sandwich just about any time. Yeah, you eat ice cream sandwich. Not really, but no. if, if, if there was an opportunity to have one, I would, I would eat an ice cream sandwich. Yeah. I like them. So you're eating an ice cream sandwich, and you're holding on to the, the chocolate wafer, and you get that chocolate stuff on your finger. Yes. Do you eat it off your finger, or do yes. you go for the napkin? No, what I do is I, I, do the, I do the Barry Stein, and I pull my shirt out, and I wipe it on the inside of my shirt. <laughs> yeah. That is the Barry Stein. In case I want to lick something later. It's so, a perfect way because nobody sees the dark. So as part of the care package, what you don't do is light this red ribbon at the bottom. <laughs> Take that off. I, it sounds ridiculous, right? But I've watched it happen. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah? Yeah, you forget. Oh, Get my God. Conversation, it's, bright, you attention. it's bright red. It's very obvious that that's what it is. But uh, let's take that off. And uh, you're going to tell us about it first? I guess. I mean, you, we, this was supposed to be them explaining this, but, yes. but you got enough information there, right? The Nueve World, it, uh, the New World is a true work of art blended with the finest tobaccos found in the four main tobacco regions of Nicaragua. The Nicaraguan Oscuro Wrap Cigar features a binder from Jalapa and fillers from Esteli, Ometepe, and Incandega. This cigar is the final cigar from the July Care Package. It ranges in price from six fifty nine to seven thirty nine. And today we're smoking the 5x55 Robusto. Lastly, we all know that the only cigar of the year that matters is the cigar here at the Cigar Authority. But in 2014, our friends at Cigar Journal awarded this their cigar of the year. Nice. Okay. In 2013? 14. 14? It's that? It's been out there that long, huh? The uh, aroma off the foot is don't even waste my time. Rum raisin. Rum raisin. Woof! Anything? City Slickers. City Slickers is right. Rum Raisin. I don't want to get everybody's hopes up here, but uh, I think someone with a backpack just walked in. And oh, and a, and a thumbs up. And we have a thumbs up, so we may have All right, let's give it. Let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices. Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. excellence. So I think we bring on Adrian first so I can yell at him and just get it over with. Because I don't want to yell at AJ, right? It, we got a thumbs up. They are in the building. The show will, we're going to do it anyway, but the show will continue. Yeah, I don't want them to feel any pressure to just hustle up the stairs. Are you happy to hear or is it anticlimactic at this point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how I feel. Adrian, we're going to have you on first. Come on up here. Hi, AJ. R grab a seat. We'll get to you in minutes. Come on. You're over an hour late. Come right around here. There you go. Things are terrible. Have a seat. You're very late. Grab a seat. We'll get you in, in, a, in a minute. So there he is. The man himself. Don't Adrian e Acosta. Yeah. Don't, e don't even explain yourself. But one personal question. Adrian Acosta. Were you always first in school? Adrian always. Acosta, AA, right? Always, always. There it is. Today you're you're, you're in last place here. We smoked the the show is wrapping up. What happened? <laughs> what happened? It was a lot of traffic. Uh, we miss a 
it was at Mesa Gate and the airport was uh, we come from Chattanooga, so it was Chattanooga, like, yeah. Tennessee, Tennessee oh, yeah. this morning, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, Jonathan, we're gonna light the cigar up. We're gonna smoke the uh, New World right now. We left one there for you. Great. And this is the bomber we're going to light That's up. right. We're lighting our cigar today with the three-jet Vertigo bomber, featuring, as I said, three jets, a single action, meaning you press the button down, the pop, the top flips open. You get a bullet punch on the bottom, and the three jets are powered by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, all encased in a full metal jacket. We don't recommend flying with this one. So what are you talking about? 50 bucks. This is $24.99 for the Vertigo bomber. It's two for 50 that's right. So I'm going to do the very undevered air thing. Yeah. And I want to know what it is about the Latin culture that on time is an optional thing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I lived in Miami for a few years. Okay. There's stories of parents missing weddings because they didn't show up on time. But what is it about the Latin culture that on time isn't as important? Uh, you know what? To be honest with you, in this case... Uh, not particular case, but in this case, it was a very valid. Uh, it was a flying, you know, airport situation. But uh, talking about the culture, uh, you know, it's a. I think it's a like never on time. That's a you know like one of the one of our particular things, you know. <laughs> so Adrian, for those who don't know you, uh, you've been in the tobacco industry for quite a quite a while. Uh, tell us a little about you uh, and how you got into being the national sales guy for AJ Fernandez. Uh, you know, everything is um, like full out of the tree, you know. Uh, you know, I grew up in tobacco. My, my dad is a tobacco grower. Yes. Uh, you know, he had 47 years uh, experience, 27 years with a big company. Um, in the Dominican Republic. Yes. Sir. Yes. Um, then, you know, everything is, you know, I moved to New York. And then I started working in a private company outside of the tobacco industry. Yeah. Then, you know, the tobacco is in my blood, so I continue to knowing the the other side of the business, which is retail. Retail. And um, great times. Uh, I worked for Nash Sherman for four years. Yes. Uh, tremendous experience over there. Yep. Uh, great guys. Love the family. Yep. Love what, what, what happened to the whole thing. Yeah. There's, something, yeah. there's something to be said about selling cigars because people don't come in in a bad mood, really. They come in and they're happy to see you. They're happy to, to buy something new. They're happy to be shown the new products. So that's the part that I like about the retail side of of the business. Right. So having the background from the growing and the farming thing, your whole life, that's what you knew. You go into the retail end, and now here it is. In, actually, in between, you work for another famous person in between here. Right. Which was? Uh, uh, where? In, uh, in New York? Yes. Uh, I work, you know, I work in I Sherman with Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, great, great guy. But great, not, great not cigars. You work for Trump. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, that's what I said. I tried to work in you know, to keep it simple, but you know, uh, yeah, I worked for uh, the Trump uh, organization for 13 years. Yeah, nice. Uh, you know, great experience. Absolutely. So, did you get fired? No. No. <laughs> All right, good. Good. <laughs> no, because that's a badge of honor nowadays. Right. <laughs> right. So uh, you've got all the different aspects of it, uh, from the from the growing, from uh, uh, manufacturing. Yeah, manufacturing, and then working at retail. And then you, this is your first time in the wholesale end, basically, of selling to the retailer. So this is a very particular uh, uh, family. Uh, I know AJ and his uh, family through my dad. Okay. Uh, you know, great, great family. Uh, I love them. Uh, and then everything fell off apart. And then, you know, I said, you know what, let me continue my journal in, in, this, in this beautiful career. Uh, was part of it seeing that Nat Sherman was being... Um, Bought out and and you did it before you did it right before it ended up happening you didn't see anything coming and say okay time to make a move here no no uh, it was everything was organically it was okay a, I don't think anything it was a very planned no good uh, good timing though good good timing yes yes okay so and now you are in charge of the sales force around the United States that's right so uh, working with uh, AJ Fernandez Cigar Company for me is a, is a blessing because I am trying to continue my roots as a family. And it's a cigar, uh, you know, cigar company as a family. Uh, and you sold these retail? Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's interesting for me uh, to work with us in, in hand with AJ and his uh, sister in Miami. And I'm able to talk with you know, Don Ismael Fernandez, which is AJ's dad. 
it's, it's a really uh, very emotional thing for me because I'm doing a, you know, trying to do a great job. Well, yeah. in, in, in a family business because you were in a family business with Matt Sherman. That's as right. big as they were, it was a family business. And now AJ, as big as he's becoming, another family business. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, so how did you meet AJ that you made the transition from Matt Sherman to AJ? Uh, well, everything goes back again. I don't know. Get in detail. Uh, deep, deep we got a whole hour, buddy. You can <laughs> yeah, fill it with as much information <laughs> yeah. as you want. You know, but uh, AJ Fernandez for me is like I'm considered, you know, he's a, a brother, a uh, big brother. Uh, I respect him uh, for his person uh, as a family and as a as a this, uh, you know, this business. He's just, I can say that I work with the best manufacturer right now. Right. Well, he's hot. That's for sure. He, he is hot. And, and this is something you, you have taste profile was in this direction anyway. This is cigars that you like. Of course. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, he, he, he able to do, uh, because the amount of tobacco that he can grow, that he can have, he can do anything. So he's, he's, a, he's a very interesting outcoming. He's a, I, I, we're having fun. Uh, we're working hard, and that's what we keep the passion of. Yeah. So uh, those that don't know, Adrian has been in the audience of the Cigar Authority more than a few times yes. um, at, at the different locations that we would do it at. And the last time you came, which was, uh, I don't know, last month, two months ago, uh, here you were com coming up from New York, and uh, you let me know you were coming. And uh, at the end of it, uh, after the show was over, um, you know, the surprise was, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is the move I'm making. So uh, good for you. you. And you like it so far? I like it so far. You know, uh, I like the, the, you know, I like the traveling to meet the retail out, out in the country, uh, to meet the self force uh, with different personalities. I've always worked, uh, you know, in try, I trying to uh, engage uh, the values with the family to all the self force and, and given to the retailers across the country. Yeah. And were you a somebody that would uh, go to, from cigar store to cigar store? As a basically a cigar geek and go see the different stores, you know, is a uh, every every store is different. Yeah, every every store has a home magic. The yeah, whole clientele is different, you know. But I, you know, we're having fun and we're loyal to our, you know, our partnerships. So we're just doing the the right thing. And how was the IPCPR trade show? Your first? Yes, your first going and in in a big role. A big role, you know. Uh, we we did great. Uh, you know, the tendency was kind of. Uh, uh, low. Down, yeah, but we did great. Uh, we did great as always, and breaking numbers and you know breaking records. I would say so. Uh, you know, one of the things I said when when I go to the show, I look around and see who's busy and go into the into the different booths. And I would say uh, there were two people that I uh, each year kind of pick a prom queen. Do you understand a prom queen? The, the, the girl at the prom okay. that wins okay. yes. she's, she's the best one at the at the big dance. And uh, between you and Perdomo. You guys were the prom, prom queens this year that you would see everybody. This is where they were going. And somebody that, uh, you know, I, I know what I, what I want to buy and what I'm looking at. But uh, somebody that didn't and was walking the show, they would look at, geez, everybody's going there. I better go there because I'm missing something. Yeah, there must be something to it. And it, it, AJ Fernandez was the spot this year that you could just see everybody going to. And you're missing something. You other retailers that are listening to the show, you're missing something. If you're not on these brands, because it is red hot, red hot. You know, uh, I think AJ is doing uh, many, many things right, and one of them is uh, great cigars, great blends. Uh, this year, uh, we released the Enclave Broadleaf, uh, which is a fantastic smoke, uh, very, very good experience. The New World Puro Especial uh, is one of the, I think, one of the best creation from the family. Because that's uh, uh, between Bong Ismael Fernandez, his dad, and AJ Fernandez uh, collaboration together. That's okay. the, that's a whole uh, the whole magic on that on that blend and all hybrid tobacco is and all the all the works. You know, it's it's unbelievable and it can reflect it now in the cells. Uh, that's like a, we can, that can that can I keep it in the, in the really? cell? Really, that's the hot one right now. Oh yeah, but now, they, they seem to all to be hot. They were all they hot, do all seem to be including hot. the cigars that he makes for other people. And we'll get into that when we bring him on and. And talk about that, but just having the AJ Fernandez name on it seems to make it hot. Yeah, it gives it the juice. Now you're you're from the Dominican Republic. Well, actually, I, I born in New York. Uh, I grew up in Dominican Republic, and then I come back when I was 22. Is that your nationality? Are you Dominican? I can say that. Yes, you are. Or no? No, I, I born here. Born but here, I, but I grew up over there. But I can see I have a dual thing. Okay. Dual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but you're working for a company that 
is based in Nicaragua. Yes, sir. Do you have a preference of Nicaraguan tobacco over Dominican tobacco, given your heritage? Uh, you're going to put me on the spot, right? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, no. Uh, that I love tobacco. Let's start from there. Uh, I, I respect uh, process. I respect tobacco. Uh, variety of tobacco for me is very a uh, uh, whole, whole variant of the whole of the whole concept of the uh, cigars. Premium cigars, uh, premium tobacco. That's what I am. Yeah. Uh, so, a premium cigars for Ajay Fernandez for me in Nicaragua, he can create anything. Uh, because he has the best product, and he do it with a whole passion. He do it with a whole uh, yeah. different mentality. It's a whole thing. He's from the blood, you know? Yeah. So the bulk of what he uses, though, is Nicaraguan, and you even see Dominican companies that are now bringing in Nicaraguan tobacco, but you're not seeing the opposite happen, that Nicaraguan cigar makers right. are not receiving Dominican tobacco. I think it's all great, and it all is, is a great ingredient, but, you know, I wonder why. I wonder why it's it's almost like and AJ is is a Cuban, but loving the Nicaragua tobacco, the blend we're smoking now. Besides the wrapper, this is an all Nicaraguan, right? Yeah, uh, and it's a true fact. Uh, Nicaraguan soil has a, I would say, close to perfection uh, for uh, this type of minerals and type of uh, distinguished elements for yeah. the tobacco. They, we can we can grow different uh, variety of to tobacco seeds and be you know be different but the whole i think the most important process is the the process what aj does yeah he don't hesitate at the time he just take his time doing his time and he has plenty of tobacco to play around okay so before the boss comes on of cigars what is your favorite aj fernandez blend uh bellas artes uh new war put a special enclave broadleaf uh the last call enclave regular that, that's you basically everyone. just listed out all of them. <laughs> everyone? Nice. That, that, that I'm being very generic. Right? Yeah. You're on a desert island. You can only have one cigar with you for the rest of your life. Which cigar is it? Bellas Artes. Yeah? Okay. That's his go-to. Yeah. N not mild. I mean, everything's got a lot of oomph to it, but not um, raw, uh, under-fermented, you know, raw strength. It is it's heavy, but aged well. That's the whole thing. You say, let me, let me, let me start from the, from the end. Yeah. Age. Uh, he don't hesitate to process his tobacco with a lot of age. Yeah. You guys more than welcome to go to the Nicaragua and see our facilities and see the, the infrastructures of everything over there. It's impeccable. And the tobacco, we have, I can say a number, but it's a big number, a mono tobacco, aging, and being processed. And it's amazing what's happening. It's like this, the land of tobacco. Listen, other manufacturers have said it to me and said, you, you have to actually see. I've, I've seen just about everybody's stuff. And other manufacturers, when they say, oh, no, you have to go over and see. You want to see somebody doing it right. And I haven't had the opportunity yet to go see. But they said, oh, it's really happening there. And it's almost a, a new generation that's going on here. This is how to handle it. You know, I want to uh, add uh, in this subject that, you know, just not the fact of uh, great tobacco. The great responsibility of a social, um, the social responsibility on in Nicaragua and in, in the province of Esteli that he has, we have 2,500 employees. Wow. Okay. So we have daycares. We, you know, I don't care. We improving like, a lot of things. He thinking because a family uh, is very important for me, for him, and everything, all the steps that he's making, he's thinking with his family, and 2,500 direct. And indirect is for another 14, 13, 15, 13 indirect. Yeah. This including fields, farms, engineers, supervisors, things like that. So it's a, it's a, lot, it's a lot of big commi a social commitment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, liking the cigar so much. So far, so good. Uh, we're going to go to break right now. When we come back, Adele J. Fernandez is a third generation cigar maker who started out. Um, with just six rollers. Today, he's one of the world's largest, and still, he is in his 30s. This is a young man, and uh, he's here live with us, finally, and we're going to hear from him in just minutes when we return. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network.
Smokey Joe's is changing the dress code when it comes to enjoying a premium handmade cigar. Using the finest materials of velvet and silk, their smoking jackets are made for a lasting impression. Smokey Joe's has fitted the likes of Smokey Robinson, James Brown, Sammy Davis Jr., and now they want to fit you too with a smoking jacket. Proudly designed and manufactured in the USA, Smokey Joe's invites you to feel the inspiration of fashion from an era where clothing was designed using only the finest materials and craftsmanship. Smokey Joe's clothing continues to be a story of America at its best. Innovation, hard work, and fearless enterprise. When you light up the best, smoke it while wearing the best. Smoking Joe's Smoking Jackets. Available at SmokeyJoe'sClothing.com That's SmokeyJoe'sClothing.com Be sure to tell them the Cigar Authority sent you. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, so there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except a name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars and the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General Warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Founded in 1989 by Mariana and Nestor Miranda, Miami Cigar & Company proudly celebrates their 25th anniversary with the release of their flagship brand, the Nestor Miranda Collection. Made in Esteli, Nicaragua by Don Pepin Garcia, the collection is available in three distinct wrappers, aimed to please even the toughest critic. Nestor Miranda Collection. You only get one life. How will you live yours? Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. In 1848, in honor of the English poet Lord Byron, 
a cigar brand named Byron was first created. Through three centuries, Byron has gone through many hands, but today it is back with the family that first created them. Returning to the early days, now the brand, in a very limited quantity, is produced in a small factory in Costa Rica. Nelson Alfonso offers three Byron blends honoring all three centuries of Byron, Siglo 19, Siglo 20, and Siglo 21. Other cigars sit in an aging room for 60 days, but every Byron cigar sits in an aging room for a period of at least one full year, then and only then, into ultra-luxurious porcelain jars and state-of-the-art cigar humitubes packaging. Sure, Byron's packaging is unique and costly to produce, but nothing else will do for a cigar of this quality and taste. Byron Cigars. Cigars of poetry. Sophisticated. Byron. This is Jerry from Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Retailers Radio Network. And we are back live from the Lafleur Dominicana Cigar Soundstage today, located at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. And with us, I'll call him a legend, but he's just 38 years old and has lots of plans ahead. So let's just call him the next big thing. Welcome to the Cigar Authority, AJ Fernandez. Thank you for coming. Bienvenido, AJ. Mucha, eh, un placer para mí estar aquí. He knows a little. He knows a little. He understands a lot. Yeah, he knows more than he's willing to admit. That's it. That's <laughs> part of the charm. I, I, I like it. So while uh, here's, here's the question I've, I've been dying to ask, and I've only met you one time at the IPCPR trade show, but uh, heard of you and uh, all the different cigars you made for other people, and then at the trade show going around from different booths, and a lot of people selling the A.J. Fernandez name, why do other manufacturers ask you to make cigars for them? For instance, Romeo and Juliet, H. Upman, Monte Cristo, et cetera, et cetera, that people will take their brand and actually hand it over to you. We're talking the biggest name brands in the world of cigars and actually hand it over to somebody else who would be a competitor of theirs that makes their own cigars but you might want shorter questions. The poor yeah. guy's got to translate this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use this. Okay. I'm going to use this to mm-hmm. stop. No, uh, um, uh, I'm gonna, let me translate this. Okay. It's going to be a few, okay? That's it. Go ahead. Ellos quieren saber, dándote la bienvenida, que solamente has conocido una sola vez en la IPCPR y han creado una gran amistad. Y él tiene una pregunta para ti. La pregunta es, ¿por qué todas estas colaboraciones Eh, de Montecristo, tuviste todas las marcas, eh, eh, te buscan para hacerte todos todo esos grandes cigarros que son conocidos mundialmente. Ya, yeah. primero que todo le doy las gracias a él, a ellos por, tu, por invitarme aquí a este gran sitio. Getting any in this, just uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, First of all, he gonna say, you know, he's very honored to be here, that he's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, in, in this great uh, gracias. show, gracias. in this great shop as well. Thank you. Okay. Eh, esas marcas para mí hacerla es un gran honor, ¿no? Uh, for him this to make him to to make to be able to make this uh brand uh to, for the for this brand for the cigars. Well, you mentioned it's it's an honor for him. Sure. Sure. Cuando why, me, why do they cuando, do cuando me llamaron, yo dije, ¿y eso qué pasó? Uh, when they called him and said, "Do you are you interested in doing this?" They said, "Oh, wow. Really?" Verdaderamente me, me sentí, o sea, orgulloso de tener esa oportunidad, ¿no? Y, y de demostrar todas las cosas que, que buenas que vamos a hacer más adelante, ¿no? You know, when and then we realize that, oh my God, this is a great, this is a great thing uh, for me. I feel honored because, you know, all these big names, I grew up seeing sure. these names. So, uh, we, we're doing something right. Uh, in um, the direction we're going, so we and con- they continue to go through this. It's going to be greater. Does AJ feel it hurts his brands? Uh, una pregunta de que atrás. Eh, ¿Crees que estas colaboraciones eh, eh, te han Ribbit agre- agre- agredido yes. un poquito en las marcas de nosotros? Because now the customers no. go into the other people. No, no. Eh, personalmente, los números de nosotros dicen todo lo contrario. Porque el foco de, lo, de las marcas nuestras nunca lo hemos perdido y siempre tenemos la misma dirección que hemos empezado desde el inicio, ¿no? No, uh, en otra hand, uh, our numbers are increased. Uh, 
because all these uh, collaborations uh, and we, we don't see we see the growing and no matter what yeah you know it, so it's not the question answer is no in that effect it's basically for example for example eh, todas las marcas todas las líneas todas son ligas totalmente diferentes todas tienen precios totalmente diferentes y no le he visto esas cosas que que me vaya a hacer daño que vaya a hacer algo malo para mí no uh, what, what he trying to express is uh, all these brands <coughs> are different different blends different tobacco mm -hmm. now every single of, of our, our lines are different very different yes. and every other collaborations are different as well so he able to do that because he he don't see any of, of affecting uh, results after that and they're contacting tenemos, him tenemos tenemos una nueva fábrica para no tener bacorel para no tener nada hicimos una gran inversión y, y estamos haciendo a nuestra producción este año eh, más de 6 millones de puros que no contábamos con ellos Proceso, <coughs> pero vamos a hacerlo. so uh, he take uh, you know quick study before he get into this he bought a new fa a new factory um, you know and he, he he to not have a back order situation right because it's a lot of demand sure uh, so he bought a new this factory to up to avoid this problem and he, yeah, he, he have more than six million cigars more wow so to prevent all that all the situations tenemos un stock de inventario de tabaco para tres años en vez de coger y, y bajar el inventario lo que hicimos fue que sembramos casi 300 acres más de tierra <coughs> so in, in order to prevent as well that we have inventory for more than three years in tobacco Uh, yeah. To continue. Uh, in modern, uh, cuántos, cuántas acres? Ahora sembramos, este año sembramos 350 acres de más. Only this year. Para seguir con la misma tradición de añejar los tabacos. Uh, we only, uh, this year, we only inc increase 350 acres more of tobacco. Wow. Only. 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 <laughs> It's going to be more. But, yes. uh, uh, it's to prevent and to, and to keep the aging process in our standards. So you're getting ahead of the game. Sure. Basically. As long as we're talking about tobacco, on the AJ Fernandez page, it showed that he was planting a, a Habano hybrid in San Andreas. Tú cultivaste un híbrido Habano en San Andreas. Which is plants for that tobacco. Estamos, estamos cultivando, eh, ya está trasplantándose ahora mismo. San Andreas es un valle bien famoso. Y a mí me encanta el tabaco San Andrés. Entonces, si vas a hacerlo igual que todo el mundo, no tiene lógica. Entonces, ¿qué hicimos? La semilla, el habano híbrido de nosotros, hicimos una prueba que ya en la, la semana pasada se trasplantó todo y vamos a ver qué resultados es que da. Ahora no se puede decir para qué va a ser. So, it's a very interesting uh, thing, uh, <coughs> asking the question. Sure. Uh, if we continue doing the same thing as other everybody The, 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 the San Andreas Valley is very famous. So in order to do the, a difference on this uh, on this seed, yeah, we, we kept our hybrid seeds and we grow it in San Andreas Valley to make a prototypes to see any results. So finally he get and that. Then right now, uh, last week we transplanted in, in the farms. Right now, the in seeing that we're gonna we're gonna see the results of that and. We're not able to talk because it's going to be for a future project. Okay. And speaking of future projects, are there more I mean, more cigar brand names looking to do business with him? And uh, to add to that is, is there somebody not looking to add to that that he wishes he would could make that brand? He would love to make a brand for somebody because most likely they're listening. <clears throat> Hay algunas marcas o ya colaboraciones que o, o nuevas marcas que tú piensas hacer allá en, en tu fábrica, en la fábrica de nosotros allá en Nicaragua. Sí, hay más gente buscándote para hacer cigarros contigo. Sí, pero ahora estoy parado, ¿me entiendes? Porque tengo que seguir enfocándome en las marcas nuevas que traemos, que presentamos en la IPCPR y, y tenemos que enfocarnos en las que estamos trabajando ahora, porque no vas a poner una a pelear con las otras, ¿me entiendes? So, uh, his focus right now in what we have. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, focused right now in, in all the brands that we include in, in, in our portfolio uh, for our company. Yes. Uh, the Enclave of Belief and the Reward Pura Especial. Uh, and to continue 
the other collaboration that we do, but just that for now. Okay, because you certainly have, it, to me, it looks like you have taken on so much already, you know, and just to get a grasp of is there more to come on that, which is would be crazy, but it's already the amount you're doing, it seems. In the translator. Yeah. Uh, en lo que en lo que dice sí que que sí que se que te entiende porque es mejor mantener la consistencia de lo que hay ahora mismo para sí, ¿eh? para seguir dando un buen producto como lo hace. Está bien. No, that, 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 I would translate yes, what you okay, said. Okay. Okay. Remember, <laughs> wait for the answer, right? No we answer. Uh, we, did, we had a uh, listener question that wrote in and said, "Why does the Kappa on the box press cigars have a velvet or suede-like feel?" Whereas the one on the round cigars does not have that same type of feel. <clears throat> the round cigars? The round cigars don't have that. This is very velvety. It's soft. But he says the other ones don't, and he, he wanted to know why. Okay. This is Peter Hudson. Dice un, un, un fan que por qué los box yeah, no, press uh, tienen un poquito más de solidez, o sea, más, más suavecito eh, que los, los rounds, que los, que los que son regulares. Es sencillo. It's very, very simple. Eh, el, el redondo the round one. es un tabaco que no lleva el proceso que tiene el Bospre de otro que es un el, el Bospre tiene un proceso de otra de otro prensado ¿me entiendes? entonces cuando tú prensas el tabaco él te queda más 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 más, 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 brillo, más todo ¿me entiendes? so the whole process of box press uh, is different from the round one and it's a this is a different process so when you uh, Put the wrapper the, in the box press is more intentionally to see more shiny and more solid, you know, than the round one. The round one we would be more, I would say, more rustic. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I pay attention at the trade show and I look around to see who is talking with the other companies and you know trying to to look in advance to see uh, who's talking with who. And I noticed um, that AJ spent time with Placencia. So, what is his connection with Placencia cigars? Él, él estaba pues, cuando iba visitando cada bus, cada bus con sus amigos allá de la industria en el IPCPA. Eh, se daba cuenta con quién estaba hablando cada quien. Y él, él se dio cuenta que, eh, que tú estabas hablando en un momento con los Placencia. Él quiere saber qué familiaridad es contigo con ellos. No, eh, es simple. Nosotros vinimos. Eh, la familia nuestra es bien unida. Tra empieza a traducir. Uh, it's very simple. It's, uh, our families are very united. Ok. Eh, aunque AJ esté en la cima, aunque AJ sea quien sea AJ, siempre tenemos un patriarca en la familia nuestra, ¿no? Uh, AJ can be, you know, doing the best cigars and be, you know, on top and everything, but uh, we always have a patriarch in, the, in, patriarch in the, our family. Y el patriarca de nuestra familia es... El, Néstor Placencia, ¿no? En our part track, in our family, is, is Néstor Placencia. Yes. Mi papá es tío de, de Néstor Placencia. So, uh, AJ is that, Don Ismael is uh, uncle of, of um, Néstor Placencia. So, real family. En los años, en los años 90, eh, Néstor Placencia trajo todos sus tíos de Cuba para manejar todas las empresas. <coughs> uh, back in the days, uh, Néstor Placencia bring all his uncles from Cuba. Yes, los start, años 90. In, in the 90s, to start working in the factory. So what year did AJ come to the United States? Uh, you mean to Nicaragua? To, yeah, to, yeah, out of Cuba. ¿En qué año viniste de Cuba? Uh, te mudaste de Cuba? En el 2003. Uh, 2003. 2003. And right to Nicaragua. Uh, you know, yeah. Yep. And right. lived there. And viviste ahí. Ya sigues viviendo ahí todavía. Sí, sí. Toda la vida viví en Nicaragua. Yeah, all, yeah. all his life, is, you know, since 2003, he's living in Nicaragua. Did he work in tobacco in Cuba? ¿Trabajaste en tabaco en Cuba? Eh, yo nací en Cuba en, en una finca que se llama El Corojo. Ellos la han escuchado mucho, ¿no? So he born in, uh, in Cuba, in a, in a Corojo farm. Ok. Entonces, <coughs> básicamente el tabaco nosotros lo tenemos en nuestra sangre. Basically, so the tobacco grown is in the sure. blood, you know? No, no more Corojo in Cuba. No hay más Corojo en Cuba. Mm, semilla Corojo siempre hay, pero... Han existido, eh, siguen haciendo nuevas variedades, buscando la resistencia a las pataprietas y a todos los, los virus que existen, ¿no? Entonces, <coughs> eh, el corojo ya es el corojo, ¿no? Of course, es a lot of, uh, it's a lot of corojo seeds. But yes, son yeah. unas tierras muy finas, son, 
son, son, es, es el único lugar en el mundo, diría yo, que su microclima es único. <coughs> so, let me translate everything. Yeah. So, it's, of course, it's a lot of Corojo seeds. Uh, but, you know, it's very limited right now in production. Uh, you know, yeah. but Corojo is, uh, you know, they're fighting for a lot of uh, diseases. Uh, Correct. Plants. All the diseases, yeah. Uh, you know, like low, <laughs> low yield. Low yield. Uh, like the Pata Prieta, you know, the Pumo, and all that, yes. all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, those lands are very beautiful, are very unique, I would yeah. say, in the world. That's what you're trying to say. What is a microclima? And in, in, the micro, in the microclima from, from that area, it's spectacular for growing sure. tobacco. Sus aromas y sus sabores son únicos, ¿me entiendes? And, uh, you know, the, all, all the aromas and the flavors and all the whole complexity is really interesting, you say. If the political thing changes in Cuba, would, would he consider going there and, and uh, growing tobacco in Cuba? Si, si, si las cosas cambian en Cuba políticamente, ¿te estaría una idea para ti ir a Cuba otra vez? A wow, a eso, es, eso es para mí algo, ese es un sueño. It's, uh, it's, it would be the dream for him. Y yo tengo muchas personas en Cuba. And he had a lot of people in Cuba. Yes. Yeah. Y a mí me quieren mucho en Cuba. And he's very loved in Cuba. Does he go back? Eh, tú has ido muchas Cuba. Yo voy todos los años. He's going every year. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. What, what is the attraction for Nicaragua coming from Cuba? Because you hear a lot of Cubans that end up moving to Nicaragua to make their cigars and not so much the other countries. Uh, es una pregunta muy interesante. Um, ¿Por qué muchas familias cubanas se mudan a Nicaragua a seguir el giro del de tabaco? Es fácil. En Cuba, mm, tus habilidades, tu inteligencia no las puedes desarrollar. Porque es ilegal. El, eh, el negocio del tabaco es del gobierno, no es tuyo. Entonces, si tú quieres ser alguien y tú quieres exponer todo lo que sabes, tienes que salir a otro lugar. Y nosotros escogimos Nicaragua por las tierras que tiene, por la calidad humana que existe por los grandes trabajadores que hay. It's very simple. He said, uh, you know, uh, and you have uh, people, families like Fernandez, Ayer Fernandez, and many other families that with all, all this uh, uh, charisma and, and, you know, energy and educator, education about this process of tobacco, but they cannot really express this over there in Cuba. So they move because of the, of the land, the uh, special soils, you know. Yeah. So they, they take Nicaragua as an example, like, wow, this would be the best place to grow tobacco. Closest to Close. it. Close. A, a they, como, a ellos como personas inteligentes, yo no les puedo hablar más de Cuba, porque es, es mentira. En Cuba eh, existe el único microclima que existe en el mundo, pero en Nicaragua tenemos fortaleza que en Cuba no, o sea, eh, son totalmente diferentes los países, ¿no? <coughs> of course, yeah. Uh, This question is for you, uh, you know, very smart. Uh, he cannot tell you bad about Cuba. Uh, it's, it's, it's different. But all the microclimates from Cuba, they, they, they're great. But, you know, es único. But it's, it's unique in Cuba. Sure. But in Nicaragua, they have a lot of variants of, like, to grow, to have more strength on the tobacco they, they don't have over there. So they, Nicaragua you know, para mí fue una universidad. Uh, it's, Nicaragua would be, it's, it's like a university for him, like a college. Porque conocí, he conocido, he tenido eh, la... La, he tenido la suerte de conocer tantos tabacos de diferentes países del mundo que eso ha hecho hoy a cabo de los años uno quien ha sido uno ¿no? so he is being able to uh, experiment with different tobacco from all around the world because he can be, que es una universidad it's, it's, like a, it's like a university uh, for him to, yeah, in different places in Nicaragua the different tobacco areas right. grow different. But not only that, he said he can play, he can play with a lot of Ecuadorian tobacco, a lot of Mexican tobacco, many, you know, so nosotros everything. Trabajamos, nosotros trabajamos más de 12 países. He, 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 we have tobacco from more than 12 countries. Which is his favorite tobacco from which country? Uh, ¿Cuál es tu tobacco favorito y de dónde? A mí me gusta el tobacco fuerte, me gusta mi tobacco favorito en Nicaragua. Uh, he likes the, you know, the strong tobacco, so he likes Nicaraguan tobacco. Yeah, and, and mostly high primings he uses for his own plants. And El mayormente tú usas high primings y todo eso de para los priming, la, la, los tabacos, son de alta calidad, ¿no? Sí, sí. Right. sí. Yes. So uh, one thing uh, is the, the change, and I don't know if he wants to get into this at all, is the changing of uh, A.J. Fernandez's logo. 
from one to another, the change that happened? Does he want to discuss why he made those changes? Uh, quiere que mi pregunta es que si quieren discutir porque ellos ven que cambiar, cambiamos el logo de AJ a JF. Entonces, si quieres discutir eso o no. No, yo, yo se lo puedo decir, es simple. It can talk to you, it's very simple. Estamos yeah. abiertos, esto no it's, es... It's very open. Yeah, that, that becomes, <laughs> it becomes an issue with uh, other manufacturers. Um, for instance, uh, the, the Sosa brand. Do you own the Sosa brand now? Uh, el solamente quiere saber si, que si, si nosotros eh, tenemos Sosa, la, la marca de Sosa. No, no. No. no, ya cuando la negociación estaba hecha, todo estaba listo, me, me llama me llama Arvin y que su papá le había dicho que, que por favor le daba mucha pena, pero que íbamos a, a el trato que habíamos hecho, ya contrato y todas las cosas, vamos a cancelarlo porque él tiene un compromiso con la familia Fuente y eso yo lo respeto y decidí, mejor no, no me gustan los problemas, no me gusta nada. Tu por tu lado, yo por mí. Uh, so basically, you know, when everything was in the works, every, all the paperwork yeah, and the press everything. press releases came out and everything. Everything, the paperwork was going on. The, he, Alvin, uh, have a call from his dad and tell him, you know, you know, I'm sorry, you know, everything was, then we back it up, we need to cancel it because it, it was a, a friction uh, that they have in the, in, you know, the, the whole uh, compromise that they have with the Puente family. Right. It's very strong, so, so they keep it that way. A mí no me gustan los problemas. And, and you know he don't like problems. He he just doing his own thing. Uh, he don't like problems at all. So he just trying to keep it simple. You know yeah. okay, he said no problem. Okay, you know, it's whatever. Was the reason uh, for the interest in it because of the grandfathered in brand names that? Esa era la razón. And that was the reason. Yes, of course. So are you in? Are you looking for predicate? Brands. Eh, ¿Tú estás buscando marcas que están predicadas? No, ya yo tengo todas las marcas nuestras con, porque nosotros hemos visto nuestro negocio para un futuro maratón largo. Traduce eso primero que no estás traduciendo en el 100%. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's looking in the marathon. Uh, he's, this is a marathon. We, sure? have a, we have all, all our brands are predicate. They uh, are. Yeah, and you know, we, we, you know, because we see this business in the long run as a marathon, not in you know, Sure Entonces, como estaban yeah, todos yeah. los problemas del FDA, yo estaba comprando marcas, marcas que tuvieran predicate. So when well, all the FDA uh, issues start coming, he would start buying all these predicate uh, names, you know. And right. So, Entonces <coughs> decidimos ya tenemos todos los predicates con todas las marcas que hacíamos nosotros como en 2004, 2005 y amigos que me han brindado su apoyo y me han dado todos los predicates. So uh, you know, in in in, in this in this process, uh, all the fr all the friends and in registers all these, all the names to help them out as well. You know, to implement and create this little uh, book right. of all, uh, all the practical plans for the future. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. Um, so of all his babies, all his different brands that he has, which what is he most proud of? De todos los cigarros que todas las marcas que tú has hecho, ¿cuál es que tú te sientes más orgulloso? De todas. <laughs> all of them. All of them. Yeah. Tú yeah. tienes que tener, eh, tienes que tener siempre tu mente que lo que tú haces lo tienes que hacer con amor. Yeah. Y todas las marcas que nosotros hacemos, sea cara, sea barata, sea lo que sea, las hacemos con el amor más grande del mundo, ¿me entiendes? Y, uh, all the brands, Le transmitimos esa energía positiva. So all the brands, all the brands that he developed, he do it with love. Yeah. So he, we're trying to transmit that to the consumers. And we're trying to do everything we do is with love, with passion. Everything's family. Everything is for for them, you know. So we're trying to do with love. If he don't want to take sample one brand to another one, everything they're doing is great. From not only for the inexpensive one, to the most expensive one as well. So you, as the national sales guy, you have to go in and present all the products to a retailer, and um, if you need to get a somebody says, okay, I'm going to take one of your brands on. Which is the one you're going to go forward with to uh, get in there? You know, it's a very uh, uh, tricky question because every, all the brands are, are really, they want all yeah. the brands. Yes. Uh, yeah, you and you want them all in there too. But the guy says, I'm going to take one brand on. And you want to give the best example of AJ Fernandez's magic that he does. Right. So I, my job is to explain it to each line, tobacco, uh, how they do it in the market. But uh, I would say Bellas Artes, uh, New World Puro Especial, that would be the hit. 
because people are looking for that kind of smokes. Okay. One of our listeners in our chat room, Andix, who's there every week, he wanted to know of all the brands that he's made for other companies, which company was the easiest to work with and why? De una, una, un televidente eh, está haciendo una pregunta de que cuál, cuál compañía de sus colaboraciones fue la más fácil para trabajar. No, todas son fáciles porque ellos vinieron a mí. <laughs> he said that everything is a, is a easy uh, thing because they, they come to him. He did, can, did they give him free reign to create as he wanted to create or did they give him a direction? Uh, ellos te dieron una idea o, o, o te dieron una dirección sobre, sobre cómo hacer la, la marca o... No, ellos, ellos, querían un, eh, ellos, querían, ellos querían un tabaco a la forma mía, entonces la idea era mía. So they want, si sale mal es mía, y si sale bien es mía también, ¿me entiendes? So they wanted to have a AJ's tobacco, AJ's blend, if it's going well, he's, that he's proud of, or he's going bad, that's his tobacco as well. Uh, fortunately, he's, they're going well. He must be easy to work with because there's so many other people that make that he makes cigar brands for that have approached me doing your work for you saying you need to have him make a cigar for you. You need to coming from everywhere. Some people I haven't heard from for years who call me up and say you should be doing something with him. Uh, there's some magic happening here. <laughs> Dice que que todo el mundo viene como él hace, él hace cigarro también. Dice todo el mundo dice porque si él va a venir aquí eh, Wow, ¿por qué no hacer algo con, con David? Porque dice, yo creo que está pasando una magia aquí ahora mismo. No, siempre eh, eh, con David estamos abiertos porque, eh, como dije al principio, es un honor para mí estar aquí con David, un hombre que ama la industria, para mí eso tiene un gran valor. He said, uh, you know, for, first of all, it's an honor to be here, as he said in the beginning, and, you know, he, he respects you very much because of the love you feel, the passion for the industry. In this business, so para mí eso tiene mucho valor. He, he said he, he, had, he for him he's a he's a that 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 company is a, would have a lot of value for him. So yeah, he's very open. He's very open to you know because yeah, there's people doing your job for you. It, you know, other manufacturers and retailers that contact me that say do business with him, do business with him. Eh, dicen que mucha gente lo ha llamado diciendo le tienes que hacer negocio con él porque you know do business que haga mucho negocio con él porque Including manufacturers who I make a lot of cigars with that say, you, you know, basically taking business away from themselves, saying, you do something with him. Incluyendo la de manufacturas que hacen con él, le dicen, tienes que irte con ella porque ella hace lo sabe lo que hace. <laughs> no, las manufacturas que hacen con él seguro quieren a ella. <laughs> <laughs> Probably all the manufacturers, they, they tell you that they want AJ as well. Yes. No, es que esto es una, esto, esto... Eh, como le dije al principio, que a mí no me gustan los problemas. Traduce eso primero. Pa, se lo vas a traducir exacto cuando lo vuelvas, por favor. Um, I get, I get grounded now. So, okay. So, he said he don't like problems. But probably in the future, uh, it, would be, it would be a greater thing uh, to, to, do, to do work with that as well. Yo tengo unas relaciones con, toda la, con todo el mundo. Excelente. He have a better relationship. We have a great relationship with everybody. He don't like problems. I believe. Uno trabajan de una manera, otros tratan de trabajar de otra. Todo el mundo tiene su estilo. You know, everybody works different. Everybody has their own style. Their own sure. Thing. Pero uh, al fin del día, todos somos una sola familia. At the end of the day, it's only one family. Yeah. Es como yo quisiera que todo el mundo, que que todos nos viéramos por igual, porque. Ni yo soy mejor que fulano, ni fulano es mejor que yo, ni nadie es mejor que vengamos. Aquí todos somos una sola familia, solo con diferentes estilos. You know, at the end of the day, everybody is, is the same. Uh, for he, he, for the, his dream for me, everybody looks the same because that's what he feel. Uh, everybody's the same. Uh, you know, um, he, don't, uh, he don't take sides like this. This is bigger. This is, you know, yeah. he feel everybody the same, you know. It's, yeah. Al fin del día, lo que tenemos que enfocarnos todos en complacer al consumidor y respetarlo. End of the day, what we're trying to commit is uh, and to see it is to uh, agree with the consumer, right? And you know, and, and try to satisfy them, right? Okay, I look forward to come visit in the winter time. It will be January, February, whatever. Wait, wait. The door is open for you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And that is all the time we have. So uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, we are gonna uh, wrap it up right now. Next week, Rocky Patel joins us to discuss his new cigars. 
in the future of the cigar industry as you see it. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And when you happen to be smoking your new world or your last call by A.J. Fernandez, always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. Can I just mention for a second? I want to tell you about a fellow named Dave and the fact I have been buying my cigars from him since 1985 when they first opened up. Two Guys Smoke Shop. Now, Two Guys Smoke Shop have three convenient locations right over the Massachusetts border in tax-free New Hampshire. Now, here's something I bet you didn't know. Two Guys Smoke Shop is America's largest cigar shop and has the largest inventory of cigars anywhere. Wait till you see this place. You're not going to believe it, all right? Now, if you like cigars, you can't find a better place to buy them than at Two Guys Smoke Shop. They're in Salem, New Hampshire, Seabrook, New Hampshire, and their new location in tax-free Nashua, New Hampshire. It is worth the ride. You can call 888-2-CIGAR-2. That's 888-2-CIGAR-2 or on the web at twoguyssmokeshop.com. The best place to buy cigars anywhere is Two Guys Smoke Shop. It's Stogie Heaven. Million choices, Stogie Heaven.